What's up everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be going over these surprise patch notes for weapon balancing that came out today, 11 23 for Modern Warfare 3. So first up, Holger 556. This has been a very dominant assault rifle for uh, basically the preseason of Modern Warfare 3. So they decreased the headshot damage multiplier, decreased the neck, upper torso, arm, and hand damage multiplier, and then they increased the sprint to fire time a little bit. So let's go over to TGD. Uh, TGD is fully updated, so I got in and tested all this stuff manually myself today, and they are live on True Game Data, so if you want to check that out. Um, also, the iOS app has been released for True Game Data, so if you want to check that out, uh, be sure to drop us a, a you know a review and, and help us get in the algorithm for the iOS app store. Android's still coming soon. We have, have a couple little things we have to do still for that, but hopefully that'll be out within uh, at least like a week or two, which should be, should be relatively soon. But back to the Holger here. So let's go look at TGD and see how this changed. So on the left, we have the pre-nerf Holger. So this is what it originally was. We see 58 to the head, 46 for this whole like big chest hitbox for arms, chest, and neck, and then 42 to stomach and legs. So over on the right is the new damage profile. So you see they basically just removed the chest hitbox and lowered the headshot damage. So now you know, the entire body is the same damage, that 42 that was just the stomach and legs before, and then also headshot got moved down to 54 damage instead of 58 in the first damage drop off. Quick look at the TTK chart for the Holger. So red is the Holger 556, the current one, and then orange is the pre-nerf. So you can see the pre-nerf, I covered this in my, uh, my assault rifle meta video, but basically didn't have a drop off all the way out. It did have damage drop offs, but they just didn't change the time to kill. Now that's been fixed where the time to kill actually will get worse at range. If we swap over to DPS, you're going to see the DPS difference is pretty significant. It's just that in that first damage range, the time to kill didn't actually get reduced with the change or increased with the change, sorry. Uh, but the actual damage per second did change. So in certain situations, it will dramatically affect the outcome. So this is a significant nerf. Next up, we have the DG-58. This is the burst assault rifle. Maximum damage was decreased from 44 to, or from yeah 44 down to 40. So that's the first damage range. The middle damage range was reduced from 35 down to 33. And then the neck damage multiplier was changed from headshot to being the upper torso multiplier. And then the burst delay was increased from 100 milliseconds up to 120 milliseconds. So anytime it took two bursts to kill someone, every burst takes 20 milliseconds longer. Um, so let's go look at that, this on TGD and see how it impacts things. All right, so over on TGD, looking at the damage profile change here, you can see that... The neck shot hitbox is now the same as chest. So the left is the pre-nerf version. The right is the post-nerf version, the current live version. You can see huge amounts of damage nerf here. And the neck hitbox was removed. So now it's just neck is the same as chest. Let's go look at the time to kill chart and see how this actually impacted the, the TTK. All right, on the TTK chart here, red again is the current live version of the weapon. And then orange is the pre-nerf version, so pre-patch version. Um, you can see that right off the bat, it took it took more than one burst already. It took four bullets to kill. So even with just the increase in uh, the burst delay of 20 milliseconds, there's a 20 millisecond slower time to kill across the range. And then also with the damage value changes, the chest TTK from 35 up to 44 actually changed. So you have a, a much slower TTK in that range now than you used to. Looking at combination here and then going to DPS, you're going to see that the overall DPS output is significantly lower, especially in the first damage range um, with the, the new post nerf value. So it's still going to be a pretty good gun, I think, but it's just kind of more where it should be now. On to the FR556, lots of changes here. Decrease the maximum damage from 44 to 43. Decrease the near medium damage from 40 to 36. Minimum damage from 36 to 33. Headshot multiplier from 1.5 to 1.4 for all ranges. The leg and lower leg and foot damage multipliers were changed from 1.0 to 0.9x for all damage ranges. And then they increased the aim down sight time by 20 milliseconds and increased the sprint fire time by 21 milliseconds. So let's take this over to T uh, TGD and check it out. All right, so the old FR556 is on the left and the new FR556 is on the right. The post patch is on the right. You can see that just like the patch notes said, they reduced the damage multiplier for the legs. So legs now will do 38 where they did 44 before. So that's going to impact uh, those shots to kill in certain situations when you hit, hit any, any leg shots at all. And then neck and upper arm and lower arm and stomach were all reduced by one. And then headshot was significantly reduced from 66 down to 60. So that's going to impact uh, basically those one burst opportunities are going to be much lower 
with this weapon now. Looking at the FR556, red is the current live version, and then orange is the pre-nerf version, pre-patch version. So you can see that combination, 150 health, uh, they're the same out to 48 meters, but obviously there is a DPS difference because the damage values were lower, and there are going to be a combination of shots where you can, uh, you know, the TTK is going to be worse in a lot of those cases. If we look at the DPS change, you can see that across the board, the, the nerfed FR556 in red has much lower DPS at at all ranges. So if you guys want to come and nerd out, you can look at the shots to kill calculator. That'll help you understand how the TTK changed for you know those one shot potentials, those or those one burst potentials for these new nerfs to the burst guns. But I just wanted to give a very quick brief overview of the patch notes uh, in this video. Next up, we have the striker. As I'm going through this, I want to remind you guys to uh, subscribe to the channel. If you're not, about 40-50% of you usually aren't subscribed that are watching the video. If you like the content I put out and all the work I put in to get this stuff manually tested live on TGD, all the programming work, the video work, uh, just be sure to drop a like on the video, comment on the video. Let's get back into it. So the Striker, this is one of the submachine guns. They increase the maximum damage range from 9 meters up to 19 meters. So this is huge. The first damage range is, went from, I think it was 9.7 actually, not 9. And now it's 19, so it got like a 10 meter buff to the first damage range. And then in the next range after that, the near medium damage range, damage, they increased that from 33 to 36. So another pretty big buff there. And then the far medium, so that's the next damage range after that, that last one. 27 up to 33, so a 6 damage buff for that one as well. And then they decreased the aim down sight time from 240 to 230. So a huge, massive buff uh, to the striker. All right, looking at the striker changes on TGD. They're kind of weird. So striker on the left, uh, this is the pre-nerf striker on the or pre-buff striker on the left, and then post-buff on the right. So the current live version on the right. Um, you can see it had one extra drop off before. So basically, what they did is they took this zero to nine point seven and nine point seven to twenty. It was probably actually nineteen. Uh, but when I'm doing testing, I'm I the way I do it. Sometimes I can be one meter off. So. This whole first damage range is now just the first damage value. So you can see 0 to 19 is exactly the same as 0 to 9.7 was before. But now this 9.7 to 20 has been moved to the 19 to 26. So basically you have the first, the previous 0 to 10 is all the way out to 19 now. And then from 19 to 26 is what you used to get from that 9.7 up to 20. And then past that it's um, relatively similar. So they basically just kind of moved around these damage drop-offs and removed one of them. So that's kind of an interesting change there. Taking this over to the TTK chart on True Game Data, red is the current buffed striker, and then orange is the pre-patch striker. You can see that that first damage range just went from 10 up to about 20 meters, so pretty significant jump there. And then from 20 up to 26, it got a buff as well. So the striker's going to be really good now. Uh, it's 279 millisecond chest TTK all the way out to almost 20 meters, which is pretty significant. If we swap over to DPS, you can see the same thing. DPS range just got extended um, in that 10 to 20 and then 20 to 26 range. On to the AMR9. This thing was pretty bad before I was using it and it just it just was painful to try to level. So they increased the lower torso, lower arm, and hand damage multipliers from 1 up to 1.1. So that's basically going to give you a big chest hitbox. We'll look at that in a second. And then they decreased the sprint to fire time. This was probably a mistake. Uh, sprint to fire time from 294 down to 206, so a significant reduction in sprint to fire time as well. All right, quick look at the damage profiles here. So this is the pre-change, pre-patch on the left, and then the current live on the right. You can see that, like I said, they basically just made the check chest hitbox bigger. The damage values are the same. They just removed the lower arm and stomach hitbox and made that all the same damage as chest. Leg damage is still the same. It's still 29. How does this impact TTK? Obviously on chest, you're not going to see any difference. Um, that's because the damage value didn't change on chest. It was just extremities. We swap over to combination. You don't even see it there with the default shot location percentages. Now, if you change these percentages to something else, you definitely would end up seeing it. But on combination, if we switch to DPS, you will see the change in DPS. There's a slight, slight increase to the DPS that the AMR9 outputs. The big change that's important was that sprint to fire buff. Sprint to fire was unusable before, and now it's closer to being in line with other SMGs, but still way longer for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. Um, so yeah, big buff to Sprint to Fire, and then a slight light buff to damage values across the body. Last up, we have the Striker 9. So they decreased the maximum damage from 32 to 27, so a big nerf to the first damage range. 
and then they decrease the ADS time from 275 down to 225. Again, this is almost like a mistake. Like, I'm not sure why it would have been 275 and all the other SMGs are around 200 to 220. Um, pretty odd there, but now it's more in line with where it should have been to begin with. So let's jump over to TGD. All right, so like I said, huge nerf to the damage in the first damage range, 41, 35, 32, down to 35, 29, 27. So six damage to the head and then the huge chest hitbox and then five damage to the legs. So it got a massive, massive nerf uh, to its damage output in that first 10.7 meters. All right, over to the TTK chart. Current live version of the Striker 9 is red, and then the pre-nerf Striker 9 is in orange. You can see that that first damage range, like I said, from zero up to 10.7. Significantly worse TTK now. I'm not exactly sure why they did this. Um, it has a, a pretty, pretty bad time to kill in that first damage range. And then if you look at DPS, it's even more dramatic. So it went from 500 DPS, 506 DPS, down to 423 DPS in the first damage range. So just a, a gigantic nerf uh, to the overall TTK of the weapon in its effective range, which is that first damage range. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to drop a sub to the channel if you appreciate all the work that I do, a like on the video, a comment on the video. And like I said, we have an iOS app now. So I can actually pull true game data up from the app on my phone and it will be live for Android soon. I'm not exactly sure when, um, hopefully in the next, you know, week or two, we're kind of waiting on something that we don't have any control over in order to get that live. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.